One of the fundamental subtasks within natural language processing is uh, text classification, which is also sometimes called auto-categorization. And this is the, the process where you take uh, some piece of text, um, we call it a document, but it could be you know, something as short as a, a phrase, and put it into um, categories. So for example, you know, this picture here kind of summarizes what it is that we're trying to do. We just have, um, after we build some kind of software tool, uh, we would like to be able to feed it some documents and then have it automatically put it into some non-overlapping slots. So in this picture, for example, we just have um, you know, some, let's say, product reviews, online product reviews, and we are just automatically taking the text and deciding what is the main focus of that text document. Okay. So there are a number of use cases um, in, in natural language processing implementations where you know, text classification might be a fundamental part of it. So, for example, if you have a chatbot that is going to handle inquiries from customers, you might decide, okay, well, there are 10 different kinds of inquiries, and we need to be able to determine, based on the text of their inquiry, um, you know, whether it's captured through, you know, speech to text or they've written it down, um, we're starting with some text and we're trying to decide, okay, well, what is it, you know, which of these 10 things are they actually asking about? So you might also, you know, want to do some voice of the customer, social media monitoring kinds of things. And you'll, you'll want to, you know, go through a bunch of social media posts and maybe put them into categories based on what kind of action you want to take. Okay, and then also emails. Uh, you might want to categorize emails automatically, and that's a, a useful, you know, natural language processing kind of task. In fact, I think it was one of the first applications, you know, separating the email that you might actually want to read versus the spam. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do in this video is to walk you through a um, a, a fairly simple text classification program. Uh, in in Python. So the actual code file is, um, I don't know if you can read this, but on D2L under the current module I have a, a Python file called auto categorization and if you'd like to download that and follow along um, that's fine. Um, if you'd like to just kind of watch and see what goes into making a classifier, I think that the um, you know, for those of you who don't have a lot of interest in the in the actual technical details, I think that um, seeing something like this would be valuable because I think it shows you know how you know low the barrier for entry is on a basic text classifier. So they're going to get much more complicated and much more powerful beyond what I'm going to build here today. Um, but it's it's fairly. Um, painless to you know get in on the ground level okay so if you are um, following along the prerequisites for um, you know getting this thing running in your own computer is um, well obviously you have to have Python installed and PyCharm which I think some of you already did um, and there's a there's a library called NLTK or the natural language toolkit um, which provides some libraries for working with with text and then finally, Scikit-Learn, which is a machine learning uh, uh, library, Python library. Um, so yeah, we are going to be using machine learning. So you can use machine learning in order to do your natural language processing. So um, let, let's go ahead and um, dive in and take a look. Uh, first of all, the data set that I'm working with is um, a couple thousand documents that, that came from the BBC News. So um, I just downloaded this data set. It's available publicly. So in this folder here, I've got um, these one, two, three, four, five different folders. And then within each folder are, you know, a couple hundred or a few hundred um, text documents. So if I just, you know, double click on this, I see, okay, industrial arrival, hope for Japan. So that, you know, th these, are, these are about business. Can just kind of browse through and see 
uh, you know, kind of eyeball some of the content. Um, let me, you know, and then so we can go over here into tech and see we got a bunch of text documents in here too. Okay, so um, you know this is going to be our 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 set. This is going to be our 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 data set that we're going to use to train our machine learning algorithm. Now, this is going to be supervised machine learning. So what that means is I've got um, a bunch of training examples here, and this is the label. So the idea is we're going to have the program look at all of these different documents and determine, given a new document, which of these categories it best belongs in. Okay, so that's the that's the basic overview of the task. So we're going to um, um, you know go ahead and take a look at this at this file, and I'm going to bring in pieces of it uh, at a time. Okay, so this this just this just um, is something that you put in a Python file to be the 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 thing that is automatically executed. So um, okay, so. The first thing I want to do is take this, you know, this tree of files, and then just convert it into something that I can maybe browse a little bit. And um, so I'm going to call this, you know, create data set. And so, you know, having having you know, 2,200 files just spread around a bunch of directories is fine, um, but you might want to pull it into a single spreadsheet. So I made a um, just a little, a little function here, which I call create data set, and I will let me just pull this over here. Um, so what this does is this opens up an output file called data.txt, and then it goes through each of the labels, and then goes through the subdirectories, and then it it opens up each of the files in there, and then so this data.txt file that results from this is just going to be a big spreadsheet that includes the name of the directory as the label and then the text of the document as the you know as the data. Now I see I have a couple of variables that I need here. I need um, that's what this red underline means. So the labels. Well, these are the um, these are the different categories. Okay. And then I also see that I, I need my base directory, which is right there. Okay, bring this back over. Okay, so so again, I'm going to go. Th so what it's doing is saying, okay, for each of these labels in this list of labels here, there's going to be a subdirectory that's called that. Um, just open each file in there, and then just write out write out the name of that directory as the label, and then put in the next column. Uh, the name of the file, and then in the third column, the text of the document. So after I run this create data set function, um, I end up with a document uh, that looks like this. Okay, so I've got label, and then I wrote the file name just for reference, not really going to use that, and then this column has the actual text in it. Okay, so I can see, um, okay, so I can see I, I did a quick pivot table here and I can count the number of documents that I have of each so I've got 510 business 386 entertainment 417 politics 511 sports and 401 tech so this is what I would call a fairly balanced data set um, sometimes if you have something like well I've got 2,000 business but only you know 50 in sport uh, that tends to cause some problems when you're trying to build a classifier. This is fairly balanced, so we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to we're just going to um, not do anything like resampling or super sampling or subsampling or anything like that. So we'll just we'll just proceed with a nice um, uh, nice balanced data set. Okay, so. Um, so the next thing I need to have is some way of of taking these documents out of this spreadsheet and then pulling them into memory for Python. And a convenient way to store them in memory is what's called a in a, in a tuple. So a tuple, and 
Um, remember that with Python, we just use the hash for a comment, so this is not an executable. We're going to have, um, with these parentheses, there's, you can store kind of like a record with multiple pieces and um, uh, separated by commas. So we would like to have something like this where we have a label and then the text, and then we're going to have a list of these. Okay, so we're going to have a list. So there will be one document, there will be another document. Okay, so we're just going to have a list of tuples. And each tuple is going to consist of the label, so business, entertainment, whatever, and then the actual text. And this is how we'll... So we're going to read this, this document, this text file, into this data structure so that we'll have it accessible in memory for when we want to work with it. Okay, so that's going to be what it looks like. So this is the subdirectory. Uh, this is the um, this is the uh, function that I call setup docs. Okay, so that's what this is doing. So I'm going to pull this over here now. Okay, so this creates a list. Okay, and then it opens up that data.txt file. It goes through row by row and then splits it out so that we have um, the, the actual, so this is the tuple, this, um, these parentheses demarcate the tuple. And the first part is going to be that label, so it's in the first column. And then this is the third column, and it's just going to strip off the new, new, new line um, on the end. And then it will append it to that list. So after we do this, we're going to have a list of documents that consist of these tuples or label and text. Okay, so anything that we do now, we just need to pass a reference to those documents, and we'll um, then we'll have the documents that we need. So one thing that I might want to know right off the bat is, um, you know, just what kind of word distributions do we have? Um, do each of these, you know, I have a kind of a guess um, as, you know, that they would have different, you know, different occurrences of the word, let's say market. So market might be, you know, might appear a lot more often in ones about um, business than it would about um, entertainment. Um, but I would, I would, a convenient place to start would be to just look at these counts. And so... Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I've got a, I've got a, another function here which is called print frequency distribution. Okay. All right. So this is going to um, go through the documents and count. Let's just comment this out for now. It's gonna, it's gonna count all of the all of the words and for each label it's going to give me a running count of how many times that word occurs in documents with that label so you know I'm gonna go through basically and take all of the business documents put them all together and then count how many times each word appears in there and then I'm just gonna print out the top 20 in each category okay so let me um, let me first of all do it uh, a way that's not very nice. Um, let's do this. So um, let's just say. So I'm going to go through that docs data structure, iterate through all of the documents, and get the label from the first element and the and the text from the next document. And then what I need to do is um, get all of the individual words. So basically it needs to split that string on white space to get me down to individual words. And that's called tokenize, word tokenize. And this word tokenize is a function that comes from NLTK. So right there, from NLTK import word tokenize. So I'm gonna, gonna tokenize the text of each document and then put them all into a, you know, a big dictionary that's mapped from the label of that category to that big that big list of tokens okay and then I'm gonna go through 
for each of those category labels and then print out the 20 most common ones. So let's see what this looks like. And I, I think you probably guessed that this is, this is not going to be so pretty at first. Okay, so it has to go through 2,200 documents and then count up all the words. Okay, so this is, this is what it prints out. Okay, so there's the category. And here, each of these tuples consists of the word and then the number of occurrences of that word. And we see here that the is the most frequently occurring word in all the categories, whether it's text, sports, politics, entertainment. Okay, so, and then also a comma is a comma and period are the next most frequently occurring so-called words. Okay, so clearly this is not going to be very useful. So we need to, we need to first of all, let's get rid of the, um, let's get rid of the, the punctuation. Okay, so I have a function here which is called clean text. Okay, and I'll just paste it in here. Okay, so now instead of just taking the document text, I'm going to call clean and it's going to oh, sorry, clean text. Okay, and so this, what this line does is it replaces anything that fall, falls under punctuation with nothing. Okay, so it's just going to strip out all the punctuation. And then just to normalize everything, it converts everything to lowercase. Okay, so now my document text is nice and clean. Okay, so no punctuation and um, everything converted to lowercase. Okay, so um, let's um, let's see how far this gets us. Okay, so the punctuation is gone, but I still have this a bunch of these useless words up here. Um, don't really uh, okay. I don't I don't really uh, you know. Those aren't going to be very useful for differentiating these classes because they're all just you know just junk filler words. So, um, what we want to do these these words that appear so often in every single category are what we call stop words. That is, we don't we don't want to include stop words in any kind of classification thing that we're doing. So, um, we have a NLTK provides a list of stop words in English that um, that we can just choose to not include. So it basically found these words appear so often that they don't really have much power to, for differentiation. So we're going to just strip those out. And then because I noticed that the word said appears an awful lot in, in news reporting, and also Mr. appears an awful lot. Um, so we're just going to add those. So now we are going to, instead of getting the doc tokens like this, I have a function called get tokens. Okay, I'm going to copy it over now. I'm going to get those tokens. Okay, and so now it does that tokenization, but then this line, this is called a list comprehension. So this says, okay, well, only include it in this list of tokens. And a, and a token is just basically synonymous with word in this context. So these tokens are going to in, not include any of the stop words. So now by calling get tokens, we're going to have, so we've got, we got rid of punctuation and different cases with this. By using this, we got rid of all the junk words, and so now we only have meaningful tokens. So maybe we're getting close to words that will actually show us you know, that will be different across all of the different class labels. And I see that, okay, so now it's starting to look better. So on business, so this is probably U.S., year, would also, so there's market, growth, company, economy, firm. Okay, so we see that these these appear hundreds of times across these documents. And we have a very different set of words with politics. We've got um, government, labor, so this is a British data set. Um, people, election, Blair, party, okay, ministry. Um, in tech, we've got 
technology, uh, mobile, uh, music, games, entertainments, film, and music, and um, okay. So, so we do have different word distributions, and these are going to be key in helping us classify. Okay. So, um, so we printed this frequency distribution, um, but really. Uh, we just wanted to do that to kind of eyeball the set and be able to tell whether there are words that will help us differentiate. Now that there are, we know that we can build a classifier. So we could at this point, if we like, just go the manual route and say, okay, so if we could go like if doc, or we could say if government in um, document, then we'll say um, politics plus equals one, and so we have a score, so each doc, so if we have a new document, we would just score it based on whether it contained these words. I mean, that would be a very basic way of doing it, um, but uh, it would be nicer, um, certainly more dynamic, uh, to, to use a machine learning algorithm. So that's what we're going to do. So what we want to achieve here is, remember that with machine learning, you provide, you know, supervised machine learning, you provide labeled sample, labeled examples, and it learns how to classify new data. So we're going to, so that consists of two steps. We're going to have to train it and then also test it along the way. And then also, you know, once you've trained it and you've determined that it works to a sufficient degree, then you can use it to classify new data. So we want to we want to be able to pass those documents to some something that's going to train the classifier, and then we would like to just well, do something like this, where we have okay, this is a new document. So I just pasted this off of today's news. This is something about Google. So obviously that you know that should classify as text. So we want to be able to just have something that's called you know okay train the classifier with the documents that we have and then okay now that I have a new document classify it and so the, these two steps are ones that you can do you know this is like production deployment okay some new some new uh, customer query has come in you run the classifier and, and the, the trained classifier and then you can classify it okay so this is just going to be our deployment step we can even just mark that this is deployment in production okay but we don't have that yet first we need to train the classifier okay so this gets a little bit complicated but let me just put the function there and then I'm gonna add little by little what it is we need to we need to add okay all right so the first line of my train classifier so it's it's taking a reference to that those documents again is remember that we want to we want to split up the training data into a set that we that we train on and then a set that we test on so you know we don't want to you know it's kind of cheating to just train and test on the same set because you know you want to you want to see how well your classifier works on unseen held out data so we're going to take that those documents and then split them up into training and testing. Okay, and um, so I have a function here called get splits, which does that. So let me bring that over. Um, get splits. Okay, and don't worry if you're not following the complete syntax here. Um, I think you know, thankfully Python's a, a fairly readable language, so you can kind of see what's happening. So this get splits function, so it takes a reference to those documents again. It shuffles them because we want to have a random order, right? We don't want the, the the order to give us some kind of clue, and also we don't want um, we don't want eighty percent of our documents coming from you know the first categories, and then we don't see those last categories. So we're going to shuffle that up. So this um, by convention. Uh, you know, X's are your like text data and your Y's are your labels. So this is a list. So X train is a list of training documents. Y train are the corresponding uh, training labels. Okay, so the first document will have text, you know, 
So this will be a list of text documents, and this will be a list of labels. So you know, the first business document, and then you know, if document number one is a business document in Y train, it should say business. Okay. So these are the corresponding test ones. So this will be these will hold 80% of our data, and these will hold 20%. Okay, and so the way I do this, there are shorter ways to do this, but I find this way very readable. Um, I'm just, um, I just establish the the dividing point is the pivot, which is 80% of the length of the documents, and then I go through and I add those documents, you know, to the X and Y um, lists accordingly. Okay, so it's going to return the those training and testing splits. Okay, so that's what that line right there is doing. Okay, so now, you know, now we have to get into, well, how do we represent a text document, you know, in a way that a computer can have meaning to it? So we have to convert a, you know, something that's unstructured into a, into a vector of numbers. And the most sensible way to do that, so let's see what I mean by that. Okay, so we want to have um, a, we want to, each document will be a vector, okay? And so a vector is just um, like a, you know, a one-dimensional matrix, right? And so what we would like to have is something like this. Okay, document one um, you know, has some number here and um, some number here. So each document would really just be a row of numbers. And what are these numbers? Well, a sensible thing to do would just be counts of words, right? So let's say, um, you know, the word car, the word um, TV, um, the word film, the word sport, okay? So each document then would be a vector under this scheme of just counts. So, okay, the this document has the word car twice, TV once, film zero, and sport zero. And this document has car once, TV zero, film zero, and sport three times. Okay, So each document now is a vector of numbers, which correspond to counts of the words that are in those. Okay? So that's what we have to do. We have to convert each document into a vector using um, something called a vectorizer. So this makes a vectorizer that does that. And this particular thing actually makes that, that matrix. So don't worry about the syntax of that. OK, so once I have my training documents, so there's my training documents, converted into these numerical vectors, now I can just call this single line right here. And this is the, um, so this is the function that I call to make uh, a naive Bayes classifier. So you can you can just Google what that is, but but basically it uses Bayes rule to you know gain evidence of which class the document belongs to. Okay, and so I I pass in the that that matrix of document vectors and then the correct training labels. Okay, so this line is what actually creates my classifier. So now that I have this classifier, now I want to know well how well does it do? Um, so I have a a function here which is just evaluate classifier. Okay, paste that there. So this is going to evaluate the classifier and it's going to print out those classification metrics that we talked about, the ones um, precision, recall, and F1. So it's going to print out the title, it's going to print out the precision, recall, and F1. Okay. All right, so um, Okay. All right. So now we've got my. Um, so after we create it, we're going to do two things. We're going to first call evaluate classifier uh, on the training data, and then we're going to call evaluate classifier on the test data. And obviously, it's going to do better on the training data than on the test data. So 
Let's just do that part of it first, and I'm going to comment out these last lines. Okay. All right, so we see um, here, are the, here are the metrics for the naive Bayes classifier. So on the training data, this is precision, so 99% precision, 99% recall, 99% F1, so pretty good. Um, and then even on the training data, it's 97% uh, F precision, 97% recall, 97% F1. Okay, so this is a really good classifier. I decide this is good enough. Um, I want to keep it as it is. So now, um, I, I don't want to train the classifier every time. I need to classify, right? Because once it once it understands how to classify something, we want to be able to have just something that we can pull in and in a single line or two just classify. So we only class we only train it once and then we store it. So these lines down here, this actually creates a file in the file system that will store that classifier. Now there's also another thing that that vectorizer that we use to convert the, the, um, the document into a vector representation, we're also going to store that too. So, um, because when we take a new piece of data, we need to know how to turn it into the same vector with the same vocabulary as the last one. So we're going to go ahead and store those two. Okay, so now we're going to, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll call this train classifier one more time. We'll train the classifier um, and uh, we'll, we'll use this, um, Python uses the word pickle to describe something that is stored in the file system. So it's going to store that classifier in the vectorizer. So we'll train one more time. Okay, and so I have these um, right here. So there's the, the count vectorizer and the naive Bayes classifier. So those are stored in the file system. Um, now, so I don't need to train the classifier anymore. So now I'm ready to just say, okay, now I've got this and this, and now I can just classify new data that comes in, okay? So I've got this example here, this thing that I pasted, and now I want to just be able to say, okay, classify it. So uh, let me get this, okay? So the process of actually doing the classification Okay, so it's going to take as a, um, as a parameter the text, and it's going to open up that classifier that's stored in the file system. It's going to open up that vectorizer that's stored in the file system. And then um, it's just going to make, you know, so this part right here actually uses the vectorizer to create those word vectors based on the text. And then it's going to make a prediction. And I'm just going to print out the prediction. Okay, so so now again, I don't actually need these docs anymore either because that was just for training. So now I can just have this two-line program here that takes whatever text, let's say, you know, in, in the original use case, um, a chatbot. You know, we have the the text that as it was typed in by the customer, and now we just want to classify it. So we can do it with these two lines. It's going to open up that train classifier put it into one of the categories, and then print out that category. All right. So let's see how it does with that one document there. Okay, it says it's tech. Okay, and that, that makes sense because it's, it, it is tech. It probably has a, a lot of the words that are, um, uh, you know, that are distinct for tech. Let's try, um, let's just get, uh, something something on entertainment news let's just grab a random uh, okay scandals engagements and divorces so that should be interesting uh, ah, it's taking too long I need to have some just gonna get some text that I you know to see if it if it can recognize an entertainment document Everything is so slow. How about TMZ? All right, maybe if I can just... All right, 
My network must be very slow. Okay, so here's what I'll do. Um, uh, I have um, something that I pasted earlier when my network wasn't quite so slow about Scarlett Johansson um, starring in a biopic. So we'll 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 use this as our test document now, and you know what we want to see is that this is going to be classified as a entertainment, and it is okay. All right, so so there's there's the whole process again. We you know we had to do some some pre-processing, but basically we just opened up those text documents and we trained a machine learning classifier to uh, to put them into different categories. Uh, we used existing, you know, Python is free, NLTK is free, um, scikit-learn is free. So for, you know, the price of zero uh, on, you know, on software expenditure and, you know, what amounts to a couple of hours of work, we have something here that, you know, does a pretty good job of auto-categorizing something. Now, news, because of the way it's categorized, um, tends to be fairly easy. Um, it might be that in a particular domain it's, it's harder to differentiate between the classes. So you might get maybe 60%, 70% precision recall. Um, but that might be sufficient for your... Um, uh, I, I see that Johansson is misspelled here. You know, that might be sufficient for your classification needs. But um, once the once the classifier is trained, you can deploy it um, just by doing something very simple like that and have a, have a nice short script. Okay. Now this is kind of the entry level. Things get you know you can um, there are a number of different uh, classifiers that are available. Um, Naive Bayes works pretty well with text. Um, there's you know there's several more that come straight out of the box. There's also different vectorizers. So this this vectorizer, as I said, you know, if we go back to that, this represented each document as a count of words that are in the vocabulary. There are also other vectorizers that can have different things in here. You know, there's one called the TFIDF, which includes not just the count of the word, but also it includes some measure of how rare the word is across the whole corpus. So, you know, if it's a if something has a high TFIDF, it occurs frequently in this document, um, and then maybe not quite, you know, not quite so frequently in other documents. So it's a highly differentiating term. Um, in the case of these um, categories classification, the count vectorizer works just fine. But there's also um, you can also do a TFIDF vectorizer, okay? Uh, but you don't get any more accuracy with that one than you do with the count vectorizer, okay? All right, so um, I hope that um, I hope that uh, gives you some insight into um, text categorization and, and the kinds of things that you can do. Uh, you know, go ahead and ask me any questions that you have, and um, start with this document, uh, you know, this Python file on D2L, and play around with it. And um, I'm happy to help anybody who would like to get it working, and maybe maybe you're running into some some bugs, um, but uh, uh, enjoy, and we'll talk about some more natural language processing um, topics soon.